I'd add the smart haddad here again. In uh, this lecture, I have to continue the discussion about what we can do on the static route. And there is a nice uh, feature that we can use it, which is the TTL, time to live. So as you can see here, we have uh, five points to do. But before I start doing those points, let me go to the lab scenario, explain to you what is TTL and what we need to do in this lab. Then I will come back to the points and start doing them. So this is our lab scenario. We have a router one that is connected to the internet and then we will have to enable the internet on router one to be connected. And then we have to also share the internet service from router one. So router two also has internet from router one. Okay, so we have to go through those steps. So what is the idea of TTL? TTL means time to live. So actually it works on layer three. And the function of TTL is that in case the packet which is going from one device to reach to the destination, in case it doesn't reach to the destination, it doesn't keep looping. Okay, so it has a time to live. And once the time is finished, then the packet will be dropped, will be discarded completely. And this to avoid to have loops in our network or also on the internet because the internet also works on layer three. So that's how we can use TTL to avoid having loops in the network. Now, by default, TTL has a time to live of 64. So every time the packet jumps from one network device to another, then it will go minus one. For example, let's consider that on router one, it has, we started now the uh, sending uh, traffic to uh, some network. And then the first time it goes to the second router here, then it becomes the TTL 63 because it makes another hop. Then from router two, it go to another router. For example, it becomes uh, on the other router, it's the TTL becomes 62 and so forth. So it's always, always, always go and the incrementing. And once it is one, then if it reaches to a router and it is uh, the TTL one, then it will not be sent anymore. Then in this case, it's finished. There is no way that for the packet to keep moving. Okay. So this is the whole idea of TTL. And for this reason, we can use something on the MicroTik router that, uh, like in this example that I'm going to give it to you. Imagine that you have a hotel. Okay, so this is the router that is installed in the hotel, giving you wireless, for example. Okay, and this is the customer. So this is someone who is like a guest in the hotel that you want to use the internet. So in this case, what you can do on your router, router one here, you can change the TTL and you can make the TTL to have a value of, for example, two. Okay, so in this case, what will happen? Then router one, which is for the hotel, it, uh, when the router two or the network device, if it's, for example, laptop or whatever, but think that there is an engineer sitting here on, uh, on this room and he has a microtech router, for example, or any other router. So in this case, when the, the, uh, the, he is connected to the internet, then he can also distribute the internet to others. Okay. So to avoid uh, allowing people to distribute the internet to others, then what we can do, we can make TTL2. Then once this has reached to the router here, which is, uh, it becomes TTL1, then one, it doesn't continue anymore. That's the maximum it can go. So that's something you can do. If, for example, you don't want that people to distribute the internet that you are providing to them. Okay. You can just change the TTL and make it less than it it's not going to work anymore for other users. But now, of course, if you are a MicroTik engineer, then you can easily, if you have a MicroTik router here, even though that they have made the TTL2, then it is one here. But here you can also change the TTL and make it bigger again. Then you are able to distribute. But that's something, of course, uh, um, it's not recommended that you do it because you are you are uh, going over the guidelines uh, of uh, the hotel where you are. But uh, yeah, that's also, that's the, that's the beauty of marketing that you can also do uh, things like that. But uh, now, again, um, it's very important to remember that the TTL, it is uh, to, uh, disallowing having loops in the network. It has default 64. And every time it jumps from one hop to another, it uh, reduced by one. And when it is one, then it doesn't go anymore. So it reached to one and there, that's it. That doesn't move uh, forward. Okay. And that's what we have to remember. One is the maximum. Then we can 
do some lab and then uh, to show you how we don't allow users to reuse the servers uh, of the internet by changing the TTL. So in this lab, what I'm going to do is that uh, I want to make the internet on router one and on router one, I want to change the TTL. I'm going to put the TTL2. If I put it 2, then you will see that router 2 will have internet. If I put the TTL1, then we will see that router 2 will not have internet. Okay, so that's the whole thing that I need to do, just changing the TTL, and I will show you how this will happen. So let's go now back to the points and start doing them. Point number one, on router one, enable DHCP client on Ethernet one. Check if your router is connected to the internet. So let me put the picture. Actually, the IPs are all set, so that's what we have now on the both routers on the IPs. Now let's go to router one. And I want to have internet on router one. And uh, if you look to the picture, router one is connected to internet one on to the ISP. So we have to go to IP DHCP client and I have to enable the DHCP client on internet one. And then I will say, yes, give me a default routes and everything. So here we go. You can see that I received an IP from the DHCP server from the ISP. And now if I go to router one and I ping, for example, google.com. So you can see that my router, router one now is connected to the internet. Point number one is done. Point number two, configure net on router one. So what we need to do now is to allow the router two to be connected to the internet. So what I need to do if I go back to the picture here, so router one is already connected to the, to the internet. We have seen that. Now we need to make a NAT here. So that means the IP which is coming from router two to be translated. So that's network address translation. And of course on router two, I have to make a route, which is a default route 0.0.0.0 slash zero to be able to go to the internet. So those two steps I need to do to allow router two to be connected to the internet. And if you want, we can go now to router two. So this is router two now. And if I make, for example, ping to a.a.a.a, .a 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 .a, and you can see there is no route to host. So let's uh, do the configuration to allow router two to be connected to the internet. We go to router one. I need to do here to go to IP firewall and just make NAT. The source NAT and then I will leave everything as it is and then I'll just say I want to do masquerade. So source NAT masquerade, that's more than enough on router one to do. Now we go to router two. And if we make ping still, we should not have internet because there is no route. Now I just need to make a route on router two. I go to IP routes and I make a default route to go to anywhere, go to the gateway. And the gateway for router two is 192.168.12.1. Okay. And then I will say apply. And now if I make ping and here we go. Router two now is connected to the internet. So point number two is done. We made the NAT and then we made the default route and we have checked that router two is connected to the internet, but we have to keep the ping open. So let's go to the router two and let's keep the ping open as they have said. So this is the ping is still open. Point number four on router one, we now need to change the TTL to be one. If router two still able to go to the internet. So Let's check now if we go to the picture here. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just to make on router one, the TTL to be equal to one. Okay. Remember once the TTL becomes one, then the it will not, uh, packet will not move uh, forward anymore. Okay. So I just want to change the TTL to make it one or router one. And then we will see if router two will be able still to go to the internet. At this moment, if we go to router two, the ping is working without a problem. So I will just make it like this. This is router two. I'll put it here to see the ping. What's happening here. So the ping is working. I'll go to router one now. And uh, on router one, I will make uh, the configuration now. So how to change the TTL on the Microtech router. So you need to go to the mangle. And from the mangle here, you can go to plus, and here you have to say for the chain pre-routing. Okay, for the chain pre-routing means before it goes to the routing decision. All right. Now the in interface that means the packet which is coming to in interface, and this is on Ethernet one. So if I want to show you here what I'm saying that uh, for all the packets which are coming from the internet the way into Ethernet to Ethernet one. 
so it's coming in that's the way into the ethernet one and before it goes to the routing so before the routing decision is being made so on this level so what i need to do on this then in this case i have to say action is to change the ttl so i just want to change the ttl and here is the ttl action you can see there is change increment or decrement so let me just put here router 2 again we see the ping is working I just want to say, well, I just want to change the TTL to make it one. So that means once the packet is coming to the router on Ethernet 1 from the Internet, from the ISP, then directly the router will change the TTL to be the one. And as it is one, it doesn't go anymore to router 2. And that's where we will see that router 2 will not have Internet. And let's have a look. And if I say apply, look now directly. You see router 2 having request timed out. Why? Because we made it TTL1 and then when it is 1, it's finished. It doesn't go anymore forward. All right. So this is how you can change the TTL. But, uh, well, at this moment, you still have Internet on your router, so on router 1. You can see if I go to the ping now on router 1 and I say ping to a .a, 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 a, you are still able to go to the Internet, but not router 2 anymore. Point number 4 is done. Point number 5. Now we need to put the TTL to be 2. Is router 2 now able to go to the, to the internet and what do you conclude? Let's do that. I will open this again and now I will go again to the Mangaroo that I have created here. And now I will just change the TTL and say 2. Remember, when it comes to Ethernet 1 on router 1, then it is TTL, then it makes TTL 2, then it goes to router 2, it is TTL 1 on router 2, then router 2 should still be able to go to the internet and let's have a look if i say now apply look on the pink directly you can see now this router is able to connect to the internet now the question is will router 2 be able to distribute internet then the answer is no because the ttl on router 2 is one now remember every time ttl move from one hop to another it decrement by one then in this case it's not able to distribute the internet to other users okay point number five is done and then with this point i have just showed you a very nice lab about ttl and how you can uh, use ttl in case you just want that uh, you, the internet will not be distributed from other users just you, you say that it's going to that pc or to that uh, router and that's it then in this case this is how you can do the change so this is what i wanted to show you in this lab i hope it was informative for you and i'll see you in the upcoming lecture